Ah. What's up everybody, welcome back to Mad Medicine. My name is Farhan, I'm a medical student, and that's my cat in the back. Uh, what, what, what you up to? Alright, that's cool. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about the top 5 entry level medical careers for you to consider. Now this is my opinion, this is my personal opinion, I'm just going to give you guys some facts, I'm going to give you guys some projections as far as the job markets are concerned, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of descriptions as to what these careers entail as far as getting uh, uh, education and your salary and etc uh, etc. Et so we're going to talk about that today. If you guys don't know, I already made a top five uh, medical careers video. In that video, I talk about the best medical careers, in my opinion, I'm gonna preface that, it's, it's, it's my opinion, guys, uh, the top five medical careers, other than being a physician, because obviously I'm biased towards that, being a medical student. So I talked about that, there is a link in the description below, there's a banner, whatever, go check that video out if you guys haven't done so already. Today, however, we're gonna be talking about entry-level medical careers. What that means is that most of these medical careers do not require additional like schooling or very long-term levels of schooling you may have to take a test you may have to do a little bit of things here or there uh, you may have to get a certificate for most of them you do it's preferred but this doesn't mean you have to go and get a degree to be able to work in this career in the previous video you definitely needed some postgraduate uh, after bachelor's uh, some postgraduate degrees in order to work in those careers so that's that's what we're going to be talking about today. Stay tuned to the end of the video, to the end of the video, because I have some announcements that I want to tell you guys about where this channel is heading, etc, etc. So with that being said, let's just dive right into it and let's talk about number five. All right, so number five on my list is a home health aide. A home health aide is someone who typically assists a patient who needs care at their house who may not be able to do some of the things they can do on their own. Essentially, your role is taking care of that patient. You're gonna help them out throughout their day-to-day -day life. You're gonna help them achieve whatever they wanna do. You may have to give them a bath because some of these patients aren't able to ambulate themselves, aren't able to get up and take a bath themselves, so they need that sort of help and that constant care in order to function in a proper manner. So that's very, very important. It's a very important career, very important job. And there's a huge need for home health aids in America because there's so many people who don't want to be in the hospital long term, but they want to have uh, proper care taken for them. And that's where a home health aid comes in. So a little bit of numbers for you guys. I got my phone right here so I can give you guys some truthful data so you guys know. Now the median annual wage for a home health aid is approximately $21,902. That is what, uh, $920, excuse me. So $21,920 is the ad average salary of someone who uh, who is a home health aide. Now the education for this career is that you only need a high school diploma, which is good, and you uh, do need some formal training on the job along with a certificate. A lot of times when you get hired, when you go into a program, they're gonna provide you that formal training along with a certificate because you need to have that training in order to take care of someone. And that is very good, it's very minimal. You don't need to go through and get a loan to get a, to get a, uh, um, uh, to get the, the training, okay? It's not like that. It's not a postgraduate schooling. Now, the entry level postings currently, there are about 18,560, uh, 586 postings for jobs, which is a lot of jobs out there. And the job growth from 2014 to 2024, the projected job, uh, job growth is about 38%, which is mind baffling to me. 38%. The rest of the stuff we're going to talk about in this video isn't even close to 38%. They're like in the 14s, 15s percents, okay? So just know that. A home health aid is expected, uh, the need for these for these people are expected to grow a lot. So that's pretty much what they do. They, these these uh, careers also allow you to work under a nurse and get that clinical experience. So if you guys are pre-med students, if you guys are pre-health students in general, you can do this on the side, make some money, and still get some clinical experience so it's a very very good very important career number four 
Number four is a certified nursing assistant, a CNA. A CNA is someone who assists nurses. They're able to help the nurses achieve whatever they need to achieve, and you do need to get a certificate for this. You do need to have some formal training, but not in a, in a way where you need to go to some, uh, like a school for a couple years, okay? Again, this is an entry-level job. Uh, CNAs are sometimes referred to as orderlies, and they often work in nursing homes or even in hospitals. They do work there. I've seen them. I actually used to work with them when I was an undergrad, and uh, they provide basic care for elderly patients patients who are bedridden they'll take care of them if they soil themselves they'll be you know washing them and making sure the patient is comfortable and well taken care of they'll uh, dress and bathe the patients and typically this is the interesting thing typically it's the CNAs who have the best and most patient interaction so if you're looking for something that gives you a lot of patient interaction the best in my opinion uh, entry-level career is a CNA because you're actually interacting with the patient you're gonna be talking to them you're gonna be getting to know them and they're really gonna be appreciative of the CNAs because they understand how much it takes to take care of a person okay so they're very very vital to medical uh, structure to patient care structure now when it comes to the data the median annual wage in 2015 was uh, $25,710. That was the average uh, amount of money that uh, all the CNAs earned. And the only thing you need for a CNA is that you need to go through a state approved education program. Usually in some states, you can actually just take the exam for a CNA and if you pass, you don't need to go through it. So depending on the state you're in, the laws and the regulations might vary. So it's definitely something you need to look at, but you do need to get some formal training. You do need to go through a program for the most part. It's not a long program though, let me just preface that. The entry level postings right now, there are 71,441. 71,441 job postings. That is a lot of job postings, even more than the home health aides, okay? And as far as job growth projections to 2024, it's expected to grow about 17%. 17% is still a, a rapidly growing uh, 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 subsect in medicine in healthcare. So that is number four. We are done with the top two. We're done with the top two in the top five. We're gonna go to number three. Number three is patient service representative. Okay, a patient service representative is similar to a, a lot of reps in other industries because they're actually taking care of the patient, not in a medical sense specifically, but they're asking the patient, are you well serviced? Are you feeling like you're being well taken care of? Uh, they work directly to field any concerns or any needs that the patients may have. So if a patient feels like they're in too much pain or a nurse isn't paying attention to them, or if a physician isn't treating them properly, a patient service representative can actually take care of those issues for the patient you are essentially on the patient side which is very very important uh, they may even feel the complaints they may track down medical records and in some cases in some cases they can explain the procedures not in a medical sense but just in a general basic uh, knowledge sense so that a patient understands what's happening essentially the explanation usually uh, is, is dependent on the physician who knows the most about the the uh, procedure that's gonna happen they're often also the first people that introduce the patient to uh, a new medical procedure because they want to make sure that the patient understands what's happening. They're not going to be able to go in depth as to what is happening, but they tell them, hey, if you're about to go into a colonoscopy, do you understand? They take care of all that stuff, making sure a patient is well taken care of, and they're essentially on the patient's side, like I said. Now, when it comes to the numbers, I'm going to give you guys some flat out numbers. The average, the median annual wage for patient service representatives in 2015 was $31,720, which is, you know, a good chunk of change. Uh, $31,720 and the education you need for this is pretty much a high school diploma. That's it. But many employers like to have a degree. They like to see someone who is a little bit more educated. So if you have an associate's or a bachelor's, it'll definitely help you out in getting the degree. Also, this is another great uh, um, thing you can do if you are a pre-med, pre-health student who wants to go into medicine, but you don't really know what to do. You don't really know how to get in and you kind of want to do an experience that pays you a little bit so you can earn some money. A patient service representative is a great, great example of a, a stellar uh, extracurricular activity because you not only get patient-centered 
uh, experience, but you also get to see how the medical system works. You also get to understand what is important in taking care of a patient, not just the medical side, but everything else, the holistic viewpoint of taking care of a patient, which is very, very important, very, very high yield experience that you can have. So that is number three. So we're done with the top three. We have two more to go. Okay, so let's talk about number two. The last two are pretty, pretty, uh, in my opinion, are the best experiences you can get. They're a little bit harder, that you do need a little bit of training, a little bit more of a training, and you do have to take exams for these. But honestly, it's well worth it because the experience you will get in these situations are gonna be very, very meaningful. Number two is a pharmacy technician. A pharmacy technician is someone who works in the pharmacy in the back along with the pharmacist. You make, sh you make sure that you collect the proper information for a patient. You uh, help fill prescriptions. You can measure out medication amounts. That's really cool. You can package and label the medication. So essentially you are working hand in hand with the medications. You are able to touch medications depending on which state you're in. Pharmacy techs, they don't typically answer any questions about medication because they don't have that understanding. The pharmacist has that knowledge. The pharmacist has a very good grasp of any uh, adverse effects medications can have. A tech won't know that. But you are able to work with the medication and refill and fill prescriptions. And they generally are gonna be working under a pharmacist. So if you wanna go to pharmacy school, if you wanna become a pharmacist, a lot of people actually become pharmacy techs to show pharmacy schools that they're interested in going to pharmacy, into pharmacy uh, schools, excuse me. They're interested in becoming a pharmacist. I'm like stuttering. But that is a great, great experience to have because if you can show a, a medical school, right, a pharmacy school that you want to be a pharmacist, what better way than to say, hey, I work as a tech at a pharmacy and I loved it. I loved loved working with the pharmacist and it just strengthened my resolve to become a pharmacist. So this is a this is a great great uh, uh, clinical experience that you can have as a student and this is also a very good paying job. When it comes to the numbers, the median annual wage in 2015 was $30,410 which is pretty good. That's the median. Keep in mind people have higher wages, people have lower wages too. But this is the median so it's a pretty good uh, chunk of change for having a high school diploma so the education requirements are a high school diploma and usually there is a certificate requirement you do have to go through a program to get trained so you know how to count pills how to handle medications so there is no mishaps happening in the pharmacy and patients are being taken care of in a proper and safe manner so you do need to have some education some training after a high school diploma just keep that in mind and there is a test that you need to take for pharmacy tech for the most part okay this, uh, as far as this this is concerned, this job is concerned, there are approximately 23,522 postings in the nation in the United States for this job. But job growth is expected from 2014 to 2024 to be about 9%. So it is still growing. It's not growing as fast as the other ones, like I said, but it's definitely growing. The reason I put this as number two was because it not only gives you a good understanding of what being a pharmacist is like, but you also get to see everything outside of the hospital. You get to see how patients get their medications at a pharmacy, how a pharmacy runs, which is really, really important, especially if you are interested in any field in medicine. You could be wanting to go into dentistry, but understanding how a pharmacy runs is still important because some dentists have to prescribe pain medication when patients go through painful procedures. So knowing how a pharmacy runs, knowing what goes into taking care, of, taking care of patients' medications is very, very vital because in this day and age, every physician and several dentists are prescribing medications to make sure patients are healthy and their needs and diseases are being taken care of. So, very, very important. Now, before I get to number one, before I get to number one, I'm gonna talk about the runner-up, okay? This is the runner-up for number one. I wanna throw this in there as kind of a wild card uh, because I want you guys to understand that there are still so many choices out there for entry-level medical professions that I had to narrow it down significantly. 
but I couldn't get this one out. I couldn't put it in my top five, so I thought, you know what, let's put this up to the number uh, one runner-up, and that is a medical secretary. A medical secretary is very important in medicine. If you guys have worked in a doctor's office, in a, a uh, any type of medical office, whether it's dentist or pharmacist or even physical therapist, a medical assistant, no, sorry, a medical secretary, excuse me, is very, very important. These people are taking care of the billings, they're taking care of patients being signed up for appointments answering any questions patients may have they're making sure patients are arriving on time and getting taken out of the rooms on time pretty much it's a very very important job it's someone who makes sure the office is running smoothly and effectively so that there is no mishaps happening very very important now their duties are going to range well, like a secretary's duties. They could be answering phone calls, but they could also be making sure patients are being checked in properly. They could be managing uh, nurses as well. So there are so many things a medical secretary can do, especially if you're working long enough, you can move higher up really easily and, and become a vital and in fact, a pivotal part of the team. Now, when it comes to the numbers, the median salary for a medical secretary is $33,040, which is pretty high out of all these. It's one of the highest ones. In fact, this is the highest salary. Uh, it's $33,040, and you only need a high school diploma for this job. Some people want to see uh, some sort of certification, some sort of you know associate's degree. That can happen depending on where you are. But for the most part, the minimum requirement is a high school diploma, which is great. Um, especially if you guys are pre-meds. If you guys are pre-meds and you want to get some experience, what better experience than by running part of a clinic, by being part of running the clinic, being part of running a hospital setting or a ward, whatever it may be. That's so, so important. Now, when it comes to entry-level job postings, there's about 32,007 uh, job postings in America, and the job growth is expected to be around 14%, which is decent compared to everything else. This is one of the medium ranges. Now, that is is a medical secretary that's our wild up that's our runner-up the number one guys the number one okay entry level medical career out there are you ready are you ready I think you guys are ready a number one entry level medical career out there in my opinion is a medical assistant in MA MAs are so important there's now becoming a very vital part of the healthcare system of the healthcare situation that's happening in America they're so integral to taking care of patients in outpatient settings as in a hospital not a hospital uh, but also in hospitals they're very important in hospitals as well so medical assistants are able to do a lot of the administrative work for patients for physicians they're actually able to see patients and ask patients some medical questions they're able to scribe which means they're able to take notes for the physician while the physician is taking patients uh, taking uh, the information from patients and seeing a patient they're even able to uh, uh, get some vitals on patients right which is really good so essentially you're able to do a lot of the stuff that a physician needs to do which makes everyone's life easier because if you can take away a little bit of that busy work from the physician the physician can then effectively take care of the patient even faster even easier same thing with a nurse a nurse can take care of that patient even faster even better now a medical assistant also may do a lot of the works for the medical secretary it kind of overlaps along the way because their job description and their job uh, expectations are very similar except that a medical assistant is going to be mainly taking care of patients more so than a medical secretary. You are going to be able to see uh, uh, patients, you're going to be able to interact with them and take care of them. And if you are a pre-med student who wants to get really good clinical experience and you want to be stellar for your medical school applications, what better experience, in my opinion, than being an MA? Being an MA is phenomenal work. It's hard work, but it's a phenomenal experience that you can have. Now, when it comes to the numbers, it, the median annual wage for an MA in 2015 was $30,590, around $31,000, roughly. The education you needed is a post-secondary program. You do need to go through a program so you understand how to take care of a patient, how to effectively take blood pressure and temperature and uh, the weight of a patient, essentially how to take the vitals properly. You need to make sure you understand how to document things, how to uh, type and scribe when it comes to 
uh, medical documentation. So there is some training you need. I said that earlier that these last two, uh, uh, um, these last two jobs are going to be a little bit more heavy on the training. Not so much as a secondary degree, but you definitely need to have some job training. So you definitely need to go through a certificate certification. Now more so certifications are becoming uh, required or preferred. It's for sure preferred. When it comes to the entry level job postings, there's approximately 45,330 job postings out there for uh, medical assistance and the job growth is expected to be 23%. 23%. That's a lot of job growth. So I think that this pretty much wraps up our top five entry level medical careers that you guys can consider if you guys are considering going into medicine or healthcare profession in general thank you so much for watching if you guys are new to the channel if you guys are new to our videos thank you thank you thank you thank you for your support thank you for uh supporting us i really appreciate it if you guys thought this was helpful if you guys liked it send it to a friend who may find it helpful and don't forget to like comment and subscribe to our channel because we're posting brand new videos every single day if you guys don't know Every week, we're gonna be posting three types of videos. We're gonna be posting some MCAT study videos. So if you guys are pre-med students who wanna to go to medical school, who are ready to study for the MCAT, we're posting review videos for the MCAT where we're teaching concepts for the MCAT. We're also posting videos for the USMLE Step 1. So if you guys are medical students and just happen to be here, go ahead and check out those videos. We're posting those regularly. And we're also gonna be posting these talking head videos where we talk about so many topics about medical school uh, every Wednesday. So check us out. We're posting every single week thank you so much for all your support and i want to see you guys back here next week take it easy fam